Today we're going to be taking a look at Ableton 10 Wavetable, one of the most powerful new instruments in the program's arsenal. To understand Wavetable, you need to understand the sections that it's broken into, and how those sections relate to each other. Let's start with the oscillators. This is quite simply where the sound comes from. Wavetable features two oscillator slots, with a wide variety of wave types that can be chosen from. Each oscillator has a number of controls that can be used to modulate the sound. Which brings us to the next section, the matrix. The last control that you've clicked on will appear in the bottom row of the matrix, allowing you to assign that control to any modulation source. For example, if we assign the wave position of oscillator 1, to be affected by envelope 2, we can then observe how the position is affected when we play a note. There are two main types of modulators, envelopes and LFOs. Envelopes control parameters based on attack, decay, sustain, and release, while LFOs oscillate parameters up and down, like a wave. Let's observe how both these types of mod sources affect the frequency cutoff parameter of our filter. As you can see, Wavetable features two different envelopes and LFOs that can be mapped to a variety of parameters. These mod sources are separate from the amp envelope, which is automatically mapped to control the volume of the oscillators but it can also control other parameters as well if you map them in the matrix. Let's play around with the amp envelope to get a better sense of how it affects our sound. Wavetable synthesizers are all about experimentation, using the matrix to add dynamic movement to your otherwise static sound. Take some time to really dive into Wavetable. Explore the many different ways that you can transform waveforms. If you found this video helpful, I encourage you to check out www.sampleify.us for more helpful music production resources. Thanks for watching.